Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. As you may know, I have retired from working on instruments uh, for the general public. However, I still will work on a few for my close friends and relatives. Thus is the case today. We've got an old violin that was given to Gina Heisinga, a friend of mine. Problem with it is the setup is very poor. The uh, strings are really high off of the fingerboard. Now, the, the easy way to solve that would be to lower the bridge, but you can see See, the bridge is already cut pretty low and uh, the, the real problem is the neck angle is just wrong. It should be more like this and it's you know it's like this it, it should be more to that and so we need to raise this up where this is about seven eighths of an inch off of the uh, top of the violin. So let's measure how tall the uh, fingerboard is off the uh, top of the violin right now. It's just a hair over five eighths of an inch and it needs to be around seven eighths of an inch so it's about a quarter of an inch too low that's a lot when you consider how low that is then how how much that affects the height of this bridge you know and the playability here because this is already really hard to press down way way high uh, nearly impossible to play uh, without distorting the sound and everything and uh, anyway the bottom line is we're going to have to take the neck off this and while I'm at it I'm going to go ahead and replace this uh, fingerboard with an ebony fingerboard because I've got a lot of ebony fingerboards in stock anyway and we can make it just a whole lot better. I will tell you that one other option is the possibility of changing these metal tuning keys out to pegs. I put a call in to Gina to ask her if she wants me to do that, but I'm not a big fan of these mechanical tuning keys on a violin. Well, as you can see, my friends, I've got the strings off of it. I got the bridge off of it and took the tailpiece off. Violins, for the most part, are held together by friction. Now this one, because of these mechanical tuning keys, this is a little bit more than just friction there, but the rest of it, uh, once you take the tension off the strings, everything else just falls apart for the most part. So I just took that off and took this off. By the way, I just thought I'd point out that look at the big hole here. Now this is either from one of two things. This is either from just work on putting in the sound post, people you know, reaching through here and chipping this wood out, or it's possible, though I don't see real evidence of it, it's possible that it was from a rodent. Uh, sometimes mice will chew a hole through a thing like this. I've, I've seen that many times actually. But in this case, because it's only on this side and I don't see chew marks around the edges, I would would say it's just from work putting in the sound post and things people have just chewed it up but anyway I've got my little uh, homemade heater here you can see uh, it's just a piece of metal that's heating up a piece of aluminum and you can see it's up to about 436 degrees I think you can see there and I have it set for 420 but anyway it's pretty hot and since I'm gonna replace this fingerboard it'll be easier to take the neck out if I just take the fingerboard off anyway so I'm not too worried about burning it or anything because we're not going to use it again I've been letting it heat another couple of minutes here and I'm starting to heat up the knife also by the way, if you'd like to learn how to make one of these heaters for yourself, I have videos on that, and there are links to those videos and more information on my website, www.rosastringworks.com. If you uh, go there, you'll see uh, you know all the components it takes to make one of these heaters. Actually, I think I show building a side bender, but making this heater is exactly the same as making the side bender, just the difference is the way it looks here at the termination point, so otherwise, it's exactly the same. Anyway, we got that pretty hot now. I'm going to see if it'll start coming loose. I'm going to try putting this in this joint. Not so much. I thought it would just pop loose, but it's not. We're going to have to do some more heating. I found that in terms of Fahrenheit temperature, around 420 degrees seems to be the magic number. Really hot, not so hot that it burns the wood easily, but if you leave it on there long enough, it's going to burn your wood for sure. But in this case, I don't much care if I do burn the wood. Now 
Doesn't take very long for the knife to get really, really hot. I'm sure the knife's real hot now. I'm gonna try it yet again and see if it'll come off there now. I mean, it's sort of working, but it's not working like you might expect. Either hide glue or tight bond, either one, will come off with heat, no problem. I, I would have a feeling that this is uh, something other than those two options. Don't know what it is, but it sure doesn't uh, seem to be affected much by the heat. So it's gonna be fun getting this off. I will glue it back on with Tight Bond Original. Some of the violin purists out there will just cringe and say that it has to be hide glue. And I'm not exaggerating when I say in my career I've glued thousands upon thousands upon thousands of joints with Tight Bond. And I've never had one single joint come loose, not one. I've glued a half dozen things with, with hide glue and every single one of those has come loose. So that ought to speak for itself. Now the purists will say you can't take tight bond apart, but I promise you tight bond comes apart just as easy as hide glue. In fact, I've got a video showing where I took a neck off a guitar in less than 15 minutes and I know for sure it was glued on with tight bond. How do I know that? Because I built the guitar. I took the neck, the whole neck off start to finish in less than 15 minutes. So that'll tell you that it's just a bunch of baloney that you can't take tight bond apart. It comes apart very easily, in fact. In fact, it's more consistent than hide glue because hide glue is not consistent at all because of the different kinds of hides that are used to make the glue, the different uh, heating processes to make the glue. It's never consistent from one batch to the next, where tight bond's always consistent. Wow, whatever this is, it's not tight bond. It's probably not high glue either. Wow. Wow, that is really hard. I don't think I've had one any tougher than that. That's tough. That's really tough. Whatever that is, it's not the norm. Okay, well when a method is not working, as in this case, I am going to just cut my losses and I'm more or less just going to cut this off of there and the reason is because I'm not saving it anyway and cutting it off there will be five times faster than what's happening here. I, I do not know what glue they use but it doesn't seem to care about the heat. Everybody can start your cringing right now. I'm wondering if I can knock this nut off here without causing any particular damage. That might not be that easy to do either. There it is, popped it right off good. That's how I typically knock nuts loose, is I just take a blunt file like that and just pop it just lightly like that, and it usually breaks them loose, and it did in this case, without any damage at all. That gets it out of my way where I can plane this off here real easy. Now it's possible if I get this thinned down enough that I could try the heat again and maybe the heat would penetrate better. But it really, at that point, I don't think it matters. I can just go ahead and cut the rest of it off because it doesn't take very long with a finger plane like this. If you know how to use it, it doesn't take very long to cut through something like this. You can see how thin I've got it already. It's pretty thin and it doesn't take very long. And it's, since I could tell that that idea of heating it wasn't working, I just figured cut my losses and just get rid of this thing. It's not a good fingerboard anyway, you know. There we go. There we go. Just break it loose, see. That's the way to handle that deal. And when I get close to the other wood, I'll slow down and get a smaller finger plane, but right now I'm just hogging it out. We're almost there. I'm gonna go ahead and get a smaller finger plane. Well, um, I reached over to get this and I didn't realize there was a sharp tool right above it and that sharp tool cut my knuckle pretty good. Had to put a Band-Aid on there. 
Not a big deal, just one of them deals. Kind of surprised that never happened before in all the years because they've been hanging right together there all these years. I have just a little tiny eight millimeter uh, finger plane now. The plane I was using before was I think a 12 millimeter. But this gives me a lot more control. And when we get really thin here, I'll just go to a scraper and the scraper will even be better for controlling the last little tiny thin amount. I think I can go to a scraper now. Okay, I can't find my good scrapers. Uh, people have pilfered a lot of things out of my shop since I quit working on instruments. And they don't make their way back in here. So I made this scraper years ago out of an old saw blade and it works pretty good. I sharpened it up just now. And you can see how you can just shave off real thin pieces of wood. And the good thing about using a scraper is it will also clean the, uh, the glue off there and get it down to bare wood. It actually looks like it's hide glue, but I don't know what kind of glue it is for sure. All I know is it wasn't reacting to the heat. I got interrupted by a phone call and I just kind of kept working while I was on the phone call. But uh, you can see I'm down to just a little bit and mostly that's just glue for the most part. So I am just taking a flat edge razor blade and cleaning off the glue. It looks like hide glue. That's one of the things I'm talking about when I say hide glue is not consistent. That, you know, one time it'll come apart, just fall apart, and the next time it takes a ton of heat to get it apart. Where tight bond is very consistent. You can use about the same amount of heat every time and it'll come apart. Where hide glue, it, it varies from one batch of hide glue to the next. Well, I just talked to uh, Gina via text, and she's okay with either way, with either leaving these or changing them to the wooden. The luthier in me tells me to change them because, in my opinion, this is like putting truck tires on a Porsche or a Lamborghini. I don't like to see this kind of stuff on a violin. We will address that when we get to it. It, it really will depend on if they've made a big mess out of the holes. A lot of times when they put these mechanical keys on, they have to ream the holes out and make them egg-shaped or something. And if they did that, then I'm not going to bother with the wooden pegs. I'm just going to leave these on there since she's okay with it. I have a feeling this is going to be a decent sound in violin is the only reason I care. I'm noticing a crack running down this neck at an angle. I don't know if that goes through very far or not. It kind of looks like it might actually go all the way through here. Though I can't really say for sure. It's really hard to tell. Yeah, that stuff there is some hard glue to get off. It's really, really hard to get off. But it's gonna come off, because I'm not gonna glue this other one back on until I get this out of, off, off here. I think I'll get some water and see if this will gum up, because hide glue should gum up with water, because it's just hard to scrape off. And you know, it may not be hide glue, it may be something else. I don't know what it is, but it's certainly not tight bond, I know that. So we'll try uh, water on this to see if that gums it up or wash it, you can even wash it off sometimes if it's hide glue. Yeah, it is hide glue, I think, because it's coming off, I think. That's my point about hide glue. You know, like it didn't want to, it didn't seem to soften up with the heat at all in this case, but yet you can wash it off, which is really weird. Very strange. High glue is one strange type of glue, if you ask me. 
why the the old time luthiers still insist on it is just blows my mind. And they, they have all kinds of uh, wise tales saying that, oh yeah, you have to use hide glue because you can't take the other apart. Or, or you know, you can tell the difference in the sound. It makes it, makes it sound uh, different with uh, tight bond. And I say baloney. You, not in a blind test, there's not one person on this earth that would be able to tell the difference. Yeah, that, that softened it up a lot. I used hot water and now it's coming off pretty good. So that is, it's definitely hide glue that they used. Which just proves my point about hide glue. It's very inconsistent. Thought you might just get a kick out of seeing what's left of the fingerboard. I mean, we got that chunk there that came off the back there and uh, the rest of the fingerboard is right here. So that's it. I know some of the traditional violin luthiers would probably scringe at this technique also. You know, knowing what I know about the glue on this uh, violin, it's probably the best way to handle it. And it really won't cause a problem. I'm just approximating the angle of the neck here. I've got the uh, water heating up over here in the kettle. I'm going to go ahead and put this on, which is just a press fit, and hopefully the steam will be coming out of here shortly. I've got it pointed away from me in case it would happen to explode. I'm wearing my little safety glasses here just to keep the juice from getting in my eyes. And the thing is, you want to make sure you keep your little needle always open. Make sure that it's open and that air can get out, and that way it won't explode. It'll take a few minutes for the steam to come out of this. Okay, I moved the uh, little uh, heating down lower on my desk and the steam is starting to come out now. And again, I kind of raise and lower this to make sure that it, you know, it's getting air. I, I don't want to block the air off on this. And the steam and moisture is coming out. hose is getting kind of hot to hold. Probably should have had a glove on. I think I'll go ahead and turn it down. So it won't get any hotter now. And I'll just let the steam kind of work its way out down in here. Trying to see if I can feel any flex or anything. Not much yet. I thought maybe it would uh, come loose by now, but uh, so far it's not doing it. I think I'll pull this out for a second and see if I can uh, get my knife down in there at all. Maybe a little bit, but not much. It's starting to go down in there now. Thought maybe it would do it, but I'm not so sure. It's I don't see any movement yet. And I'm turning the heat back off on the water again. Just let it kind of work its way in here. Starting to see a little bit of flex, I think. Just a tiny bit. The further I get the knife down in there, the more that water will get around. Weathered and warm. 
Unfortunately, uh, that glue is not given up to ghosts. Yeah, if this was tight bond, this would already be off of here because uh, tight bond comes really loose with moisture and heat. It comes, it just falls apart with real hot water. And uh, yeah, it's, this is, like I said, you just never know with uh, high glue how it's going to react. Sometimes it's really easy and sometimes it's really hard. And this, of course, is one of the really hard ones. With the hinges all rusted and the fabric all torn, but still cradled inside was one old precious thing. It was grand. See, this is a should be an easy neck to take out. This is my point about high glue. I, I should told you I'd got a video taking a guitar neck out and I did it in only 15 minutes. Start to finish. We've already been on this about 30 or 40 minutes and we're not done yet. And this is hide glue. It's wiggling a little bit, but only a little bit. Cleaning out the junk there in case there's any junk in there. I'm going to try getting this real sharp X-Acto knife down in the slot. Well, I'm going to keep monkeying with this and I'll show you what it looks like when I make some progress. I've taken out dozens upon dozens upon dozens of violin necks, and this has got to be one of the hardest ones I've ever done. Very, very difficult. It just doesn't seem to want to loosen up at all. I knew I was going to be in for trouble with as hard as that fingerboard was to, to get it loose. I was expecting problems. Not quite this much problem. Okay, I've got the heat turned back off again. Let it, let it cool off a little bit. Melodies, he played it from his heart for my grandma and me. Wrinkled old hands, he held it with... I can see a tiny bit of flex in the joint, but only a tiny bit. For as much steam as I put in there, that ought to be just popping loose. That's amazing. That's just amazing. I think I might be making some headway now. I've heated this knife up and I've forced it into the edges here. And I can still hear it laying up in heaven above. Yeah, the heat just don't seem to cut this glue at all. I just got the just about got the heel loose, I think. There we go. We're getting movement now, finally. Put some more hot water down in there and wiggle it while it's hot and steaming, and that'll help it pump that steam around in those other places. Honest man that I ever have seen, and his time on this old earth was most precious to me. But he lived on current. Ah, oh, finally. That was a tough one, man. I seriously have done that dozens upon dozens of times, and that one might be the hardest one ever. Don't know why, it just was. Just don't know why. Didn't really come out that bad. There's a little bit of tear out right there, but that's a very minimal amount of tear out. It's thinner than it looks. Golly, that was tough. That was tough. But that's not a big deal. We can put her back and you'll never know it when we're done. Well, now that the uh, neck has been off and drying for a few hours, everything feels nice and dry again. I'm going to, uh, prepare this new ebony fingerboard to go on here 
And what I do is I lay it on there where it goes, then I draw a pencil line across here, and then I'm going to scallop this out a little bit more. It was already scalloped from the factory. Now I've already sanded this with, with my uh, uh, spindle sander to knock some more out, but you can see we can knock out some more. And again, this is just for lightness, uh, you know, to make it more delicate type thing. And I'm just going to start with this little finger plane and see if it works. It might not work. A lot of it depends on how you have it set. Here's one that's got a tooth blade. It's a little bigger. And this tooth blade will dig in and cut, I think. Eventually, I'll find the one that cuts the best on this. And that's not it. It's all in how the blade's set. You know, I could resharpen and reset them, but this one seems to be cutting pretty good. Not great, but better. Again, it's just about lightening it up and making it more delicate. You know, you don't want to put some big clunky thing on, on your violin. There we go. I got it adjusted a little better there. It's really cutting. Yeah, that's cutting now. Really good. Okay, I'm trying not to get past my line, just cut up to it. It's, that's pretty smooth already. And you can see it's still fairly thick back there. We can thin this down a little bit more. River at the mouth of the springs And at night the hills that go as the old fiddle would ring Feels fairly smooth. When I'm cutting it like that, I try to keep the cuts nice and even and smooth. Grandpa's old fiddle plays sweet melodies. He played it from his heart. I should have waited before and after to see how much lighter it is. It's still got plenty of meat. There's no question about that. Might take off a little bit more yet. So often I see these fingerboards put on violins and they haven't been trimmed down. They just go with the factory shape and size. It's not a good, not a good look and it's not a good feel. For my grandma and me, wrinkled old hands, he held it with love and I can still I think we can probably live with that and then we can shape it some more after it's actually on the violin. Make it a little more dainty. Let's try to make sure it feels symmetrical. It feels pretty darn good. Now I'll just take a little scraper and in this case I might just use this X-Acto blade. This has got the round blade on it and I can scrape the uh, rough carvings out of there and get it nice and smooth. This blade's kind of dull. I could use a new blade. I'll just, instead of messing with it, I'll just sharpen it really quick like this. It, these are fairly quick to touch up. It's almost quicker to touch it up than it is to put a new blade in it. That should be fine. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's moved it out a lot. Now I'll just take a little bit of 220 sandpaper and clean it up a little bit more. Okay, we'll just clean it up with this and we'll get rid of the sharp corners and edges and things. I also take like this is a half round file, and I'll knock off the sharpness underneath on the bottom of this. Some people really knock this down a lot, and there's nothing wrong with that. You could do that, but at least I don't want it to be sharp. It also makes the edge look a little more dainty. It makes it look a little thinner. As you can see there, it's getting kind of, getting a little bit more thin looking. 
In fact, I think I'll use a little coarser file to knock off a little bit more. And then sand it to make it all look the same. That thins down the end of it a lot more. Makes it look nice, aesthetic so clunky. I'm not gonna worry about the outside and the outside shape yet until we get it glued onto the neck. I see a line right there where the nut goes, so I'll just glue it on right there. This fingerboard is just a hair narrower than this neck, and we'll clean that up later after we get her glued in place. I will probably use the pin method to keep this in place while it's being glued. This one did not have the pin method in use. They often do on old violins, but this one did not. But I'm gonna do that because I know for sure when I clamp it, it's not gonna move around like this. Okay, so what I do is I take these little tiny brad nails. They're only a half inch long, but I'm, I'm not gonna drive it in very far. Very, it's gonna be very minimal driven into the neck. The hardest thing is holding it, they're so short. And just drive it in, oh, I don't know, eighth inch at the most. That's more than enough right there. Try to keep it straight up and down. And then I just take these uh, side cutters here and you can see that uh, they've got a little groove down in there. Well, that little groove leaves just enough nubs sticking up. So that's all you need. You just, I just lay them flat on the, on the neck, cut it off like that, and it leaves a little sharp nub right there. Then I'll do the same thing back here on kind of the opposite side. I go back to where the heel of the neck is. That way it's in good heavy meat. It's easy except that it's not easy. Just hard to hold is all. Okay, just drive it in there a little ways. Doesn't have to go very deep. Again, just lay it flat, cut it off leaves a nice sharp nub. Those nubs are really sharp and nothing's gonna slide on that. Then you lay this on here, take your time, get it exactly where you want it. Just making sure I got it right where I want it. And then you just take a plastic mallet like this and you tap it right above that nail. And we'll tap this one. Sometimes it drives the nail further into the wood, and it did that time too, but it also left two little tiny marks, and I just take a very tiny drill and just, just touch it right there, just enough to lock it in place. So I've got a real tiny little drill in here. Do the same thing right here. Okay, so then you got those two little tiny marks. You go ahead and line this all back up and they fit right in that hole like that. And then there's just no moving it. Once you get the glue on there, then you can tighten this up and clamp it and it won't move. Compared to any other way you do it, I guarantee you, you can get movement. Yeah, it's just real easy to get movement in fact. So that's not what you want. You want it to stay exactly put in place. Now a guy could scarf this a little bit just to uh, make it uh, have a little bit of bite. And sometimes that's not a bad idea. So I've got a toothed blade here and I'm just gonna lightly scratch this. It's just really light scratches. And the only reason I'm doing that, when you sand it, it gets glazed over just like glass. So it's really smooth. And I'm just giving the glue a little bit of something to grab a hold of. These scratches are not even a thousandth of an inch deep, if that. But it does give a little bit of tooth to the wood Okay, so now I'm going to spread this glue out on here. I'm gonna to try to do it very thin. 100% coverage, very thin is exactly what you're shooting for. Okay, well, paint this on extremely thin. Um, in fact, it's already, I can tell I've got a little more than I need. So what we do in a case like that is we just, you know, spread it out first and uh, then we'll spread it on here because I was gonna spread it on here anyway and we'll just rob the glue from here. 
The thinner you can make this in 100% coverage, the better. It'll be stronger, it won't slide around as much. Uh, there's just uh, lots of advantages. But you just don't want a ton of squeeze out on something like this, because it just makes it hard to maintain its position. It wants to slide all the time. But with the two little nails, if you put those in there and you do it properly, then it'll stay anyway. I think we've got that. Take a couple of clamps here. Now these clamps have rubber on both sides, both pads. So I clamp those two first. Those are the two that are over the nails and that really holds it solid. It doesn't slide now. I guarantee you without those nails, it slides like you're on ice skates. We'll put at least one more clamp on it here in the middle, maybe two. These have leather on them already, but I like to put an extra pad of leather. And you can see how much glue squeeze out came out of there even though that glue was put on paper thin. And then there's the next argument is you're gonna squeeze all the glue out of the joint. Well, I've been doing this for 40 years and I can honestly tell you for sure that I've never had one single tight bond glue joint ever fail, not one. So that's 40 years. So I'm gonna stick with my method. You can choose not to clamp it tight if you prefer, but I prefer to clamp it as tight as I can get it clamped. Okay, I've got her all cleaned up on the glue. Back here, the uh, fingerboard is a teeny bit narrower than the back of the neck. Up here, the, t uh, the uh, fingerboard is a teeny bit wider than the neck. So I've got some shaping to do uh, to make it all work out, but it will work out just fine. I'm gonna let this set overnight. Well, my friends, it's the next day and uh, I've taken the uh, clamps off of this. This is all dried out now. I'm noticing a few things that I didn't quite notice yesterday. You can see right here, there's a lot of tear out right there, but that didn't come off of the heel of this neck. That You can see the heel of the neck is smooth. I don't know where that came from, unless that was some sort of a shim. I kind of think it must have been some sort of a shim that was put in there. And there's a little bit of tear out right there and kind of matches this here. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet. I'm gonna kick it around just a little bit here. I think I can clean it up. Actually, it's looking pretty good right there. It's not too bad. I'm looking for about a seven eighths inch height right here. So let's see what it is. That's a little too high. About right there is where I wanna be. Yeah, that right about there is just about right. You can see that the neck's not going in all the way, so we gotta clean it up a little bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and, you know, take my chances here and cut off these fibers. Just clean them off and get rid of them. I'll probably take a chisel and clean them off of the inside of this area also, or at least try that. Probably don't have to take much off of this, just a little bit. Yeah, there's definitely some uh, wood that was put in here, like shim type stock or something. <sighs> Let's just see how it goes together now. See if we're getting closer. Again, I'm looking for that fit with a 7 8 height. We're a little over an inch there. That's a little too much. That's right on the money right there. And that looks pretty, pretty good fit. I think there's a tiny bit of a gap behind it here. So I'm gonna do some monkeying around. Now this is fitting up again pretty good, but I think I need a tiny wedge. I think I need a tiny wedge from thick right here to basically nothing right there. And I'm really talking a very thin type wedge, like maybe a 16th of an inch down to nothing. I think is what it's gonna take to make this fit right. Boy, that's real close right where I wanna be there. It looks like it's running straight down the body. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Well, I'm gonna do a little more off camera here, just monkeying around with the fit and everything. And I'll, if I do anything that you need to see, I'll sure show you. Okay, I just thought I'd show you. I've got it fitting up pretty good, I think. Actually, that's a hair low. It actually holds itself in there still. 
And what I did was I put a wedge on the back of it here. The wedge popped out when I pulled the neck out. Try to fit it in there as good as I can. Now it seems high again. Might have to work on the wedge a little bit more. That's just about where I want it there. That's pretty close. That's maybe a sixteenth high. But anyway, the point is it's getting close to, to fitting. It's going to work, I think. I might take a little more off this wedge. That's what it looks like, just a real thin wedge there. I'll just basically scrape it thinner and thinner by scraping it on here like this. I made the wedge out of a piece of maple. I felt like that was probably the best choice for this. The neck itself is made out of maple. Now the block is made out of spruce, but I felt like the maple would, because we're going so thin here, I thought the maple would probably be a better choice for the wedge. It doesn't look like much is coming off, but it does actually scrape uh, a fine dust off of there. It's probably hard to see, but there's some of it. I'm trying to see if the wedge feels smooth and, you know, consistent. And it does for the most part. There's still a little place or two on it. Anyway, you can kind of see what I'm doing there. Yeah, I fit that back into place. The goal is that you, you have no air gap in there. You don't want an air gap. You want it all tight. And then get all the glue in there and it should work just fine. That's exactly one inch, so it's, I'd say it's probably a, at least a sixteenth high still. So I've got to work on that a little bit more, and I'm just going to do that off camera. When I get it fitting up right, I'll show you. I worked on that wedge a little bit more, and I think I'm pretty happy with that. It's got everything centered down the middle. The angle on this looks really good. It's uh, just a teeny bit over seven eighths, and I think I can live with that. Typically, when you get your tension on here sometimes that can change it can sometimes get higher sometimes get lower just depends on what's happening you know if the top is going down which it shouldn't then this could get higher but if you know like if the body is flexing like this well then this can get lower you know so it's it's really hard to say but i think it's going to be pretty stable right where it's at there based on the, the way this thing feels. Before I actually glue it in I'm going to work on the fitment up here on this uh, new fingerboard. I knew it was a little this uh, neck is a little bit wider than this fingerboard is back in here and then up here if anything it's a, a little bit narrower. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and make it fit. grain in this ebony seems to be going two different directions. Sometimes that's the case too. You get into a swirly part in the grain. Now here I'm going to have to actually cut a little off the neck. Shave a little bit off the neck here to make it fit better. And I don't think that's going to be a problem. I'm just going to try to do it without affecting the, uh, the joint much. Laying up in heaven above but just a boy had the time I think there is kind of a knot in this uh, fingerboard right here wouldn't you know that happens sometimes on this ebony they try to utilize every piece of it, and sometimes you get one that's got just a tiny bit of a growth in it. This one seems to have that right here. Wouldn't you know, right where I need to carve it, of course. With a file like this, it doesn't matter too much if there's a growth there or not. You can file through it fairly easily. Remember a day when Grandpa and that old fiddle Some old tunes he did play well, now Grandpa, he has left us for heaven above, but he left me that old... Got a little bit right in here. I'm going to have to take off of this neck to make it look good. We'll just have to stain it to get it to come back. I 
That's nice. Yeah, you know, that fits pretty good. Now, still got some fitment over here yet. Now I play it with love. Grandpa's old fiddle playing sweet melodies. This side of the neck is is it's got some whoopties in it that you know were there before I did this. I mean. It, it's like it's high here, high here, but it's low right there. And that's just part of the neck. I can't do much about that, but I'm going to try to shape the ebony to fit it. He played it from his heart for my grandma and me. Wrinkled old hands, he held it with love. Trying to knock the sharp corner off of the new fingerboard here. And I can still hear it playing up in heaven above. The old fiddle is ringing up in heaven above. Oh, that's looking pretty good now. It, like I said, I can still feel it a little bit, and so I'm trying to get rid of that little bit. Again, the neck isn't exactly shaped perfectly. So I'm having to try to shape the ebony to fit the neck. There's low spots in the neck. It's pretty decent. It sure beats what was on there. That maple just wasn't getting it done for me. This ebony is much nicer and I think we've got it cleaned up to the point where it's pretty smooth and pretty pretty nicely shaped. There's a glob of something right there and I think this needs to be shaped more anyway so we can kill two birds with one stone by shaping this a little bit and we'll get rid of that glob also. We'll just have to restain it. That feels pretty darn good. It's gonna sand it smooth and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this in place and then we'll worry about the detail details after it's glued back on the violin. Let's double check the fitment of this one more time. Yeah, it's still just a hair high prefer it to be just a tiny bit lower than that, but it might just be the way we're clamping it. That looks pretty good right there. Trying to decide if I'm ready to do it or not. I guess there's no time like the present. Once again, I'll be using tight bond. And for those of you who think this is a mistake, I'm telling you tight bond would have came off easier than the high glue. I guarantee you for sure. How do I know that? Because I've done it a bunch of times. Not just once, I've done it a lot of times. Got a lot more glue in there than I need, for sure. So I'll spread it around with this brush. Probably have a little more in there than I need. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that out with this towel and I'm gonna put this wedge in here. In fact, I'm gonna put the wedge in that direction. Probably could have used that extra glue on this side of this wedge. I think we got 100% coverage. Now the question is, will the fitment still be okay? And sometimes that can change when you get glue on something. Oops, I didn't do a very good job of getting glue on the bottom of there, so I'm gonna get Get that glued up too. You need full coverage on everything. In the fall, in the fall, come springtime, we were made. It's right on the money, Sonny. I'm gonna get a clamp that goes around it this way and a clamp that'll clamp this way and I'm gonna get some wet towels to wash it off better. Got this web clamp holding the neck in place. I've got this clamp kind of pressing that little tab up on the neck. Looks pretty good to me. Try to get in here with this wet towel and maybe this brush even and clean out 
any extra glue. Just double checking my height one more time. I don't want this to be off. Well, it's right on the money, right at 7 eighths. It's coming right straight down the center. Can't get it much better than that. I'm gonna let that set overnight. Well, it's the next morning and we're gonna take the clamps off. Hopefully everything stayed as we left it. Yeah, it looks real good, actually. Looks like it's still centered down the body. Looks like everything's just fine. Let's see if the height stayed true. It should have. If anything, it's a hair high, which I think is probably okay. We'll be fine with that, I think. Now we can just do the setup. I'm debating on this. I, I keep going back and forth. Uh, she said she's perfectly okay with this. I kind of think by her tone, she was kind of looking forward to using trying this because she's never tried it. I figure there's no harm in leaving this on there. It's already on there. We'll string it up this way. If it turns out she doesn't like it, we well, can always change. It's not that big a deal. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put it together, get this thing out of the shop, and get it back in her hands. Well, my friends, I was getting a little ahead of myself. I went ahead and made this nut uh, off camera. The old nut wasn't gonna fit. It wasn't gonna be high enough, so that's why I did that. Now I'm getting ready to fit up a bridge. We're gonna have a much higher bridge, of course. Now the first thing I do is I wanna thin the feet down, and so I put this approximately where it's gonna live, and I take a pencil, and I just more or less try to hold the pencil at a certain height to get an angle there. And I do it on both sides, try to get a consistent angle. You can kind of see it there. It's a little higher on one side than the other, but that kind of gives me the angle, if nothing else. It just kind of tells me where it ought to be cut. I think I'll try this one again and maybe do it just a little bit higher. Again, it's not the height so much, it's the angle. The, the angle this way for the most part. You know, I just want to be able to take a chisel now and work on that angle and trim these feet down. The logo goes to the back, goes to, toward the tailpiece, or the, uh, you know, the, they refer to it as the stamp. At least that's the way I've always done it, and it makes more sense because of the uh, angle that these, these this angle from front to back is not perfectly symmetrical, and this makes it stand up straighter also. So that's the way I do it anyway. Feel free to disagree. You gotta be a little bit careful trimming these off because you can break a big chunk out. So I try to trim very thin slices. Thinner the better. Anyway, you try to trim them down where you get a really thin foot. That might not be thin enough yet, but what I'll do is do my sandpaper trick. What I try to do is find about where it's going to ride. I try to hold the bridge straight up and down, and I go sideways rather than forwards and backwards. Forwards and backwards, I don't like that because it, it uh, tends to round the, the front edge or the back edge of the uh, foot off. I want to keep the foot as flat as possible. And if you only move a, you know, an eighth of an inch, you're, you're doing the same thing as you would be if you went this way. In fact, I think you're doing better because you're staying in the exact spot where you, wanna, where you want this thing to live. I don't have any trouble with it. I know other people will argue and say that's not the way to do it, and that's just fine. Do it the way you want to. I got no problem with that. I just know this works great for me. And you can see there how it's taken off the the sawdust there and you can also see that it doesn't rock it sits right there when I set it there see so I kind of just rest my case that it works and that looks pretty darn good I think it's fitting it pretty well so the next thing I do then is I take a uh, finger plane I start trimming this down to make it thinner actually I get a little bit ahead of myself there I could lay it here first I'll show you how I mark it uh, for height. Might as well get rid of the height. That'll just be less planing. I kind of run it across at an angle from the treble side, and then, then the, the rest of this would be taken off on the base side. So, you know, I have a longer taper on the, on the treble side than on the base side is what it mounts to, so that it falls over on the base side then. 
and so this one you can see is going to be pretty tall it's going to be a pretty tall bridge typically over time they get shorter and shorter as these necks and things change but i'm going to go ahead and, and just uh, go over to the sander and sand this off a little bit okay now that i've got that uh, trimmed on the top i'm just going to start uh, thinning this bridge down because we really do want a, th a pretty thin bridge you want to get rid of a lot of the meat it just helps it vibrate better You have to be careful about these little feet that are sticking around in there because if you cut them the wrong direction, you'll break them off. So I always try to cut into them and not, not pulling away from them because if you pull away from them, you'll pull them right off. The shorter they are, the thinner I make them because they don't, they don't need as much structure. I can't quite go as thin on this one because it's going to need a little more structure, but it's still going to be pretty thin. I think that's good enough. Now I'll probably just sand it like this. Now the old timers, they don't ever sand anything. They don't like the sand. They think it fills the pores and all that. but. And you know, there's some truth to that, I there's no doubt. But on the other hand, <laughs> the pores in maple are so tiny that, you know, it's not hardly a care in my opinion. I think there's more wives tales to it than there are actual fact. And that looks, that looks pretty good. You can see how thin it is there. Well, my friends, I believe we're ready to start stringing this puppy up. I'll show you what I do here. Whenever you got these built-in tuners, I back them off all the way before I start stringing it. And that is because um, you want to try to tune, do as much tuning as you can up here. And then you use these for just your fine adjustment at the end. Okay, it's going to be a little tricky. The sound post is still in there, which probably indicates that it's in there too tightly. Sometimes it's, you're better off just to leave well enough alone. So I'm just going to leave it where it's at. Not going to worry about that right now. I always start with the closest string and go that direction, which just makes sense if you think about it because uh, otherwise they get in the way. These are uh, Pro Art strings. I think this one probably has a wound E. I, yeah, aluminum wound E, which is really good. So in other words, it's not just a solid steel string. It's got, it's got winding around it. That helps uh, tone them down where you don't hear that harshness. These are a nylon core string. Really good strings, I think, for the money. Okay, we're gonna have a little fun here. This is always an issue. See how tight uh, the slots are there. You can't get your string down in there a lot of times. I don't like that myself. I prefer that be opened up just a little bit. So I'm gonna see if I can't open it up just a little bit. Take this X-Acto blade, pop it in there and see if it'll just open up a little bit. Doesn't have to be that much, just a little bit. In this case, with this kind of uh, tuner in here, I, I don't know if I'm gonna like uh, tuning this this way or not, but uh, I'll just have to give it a shot and see. Ordinarily, I don't cut the strings off with when you've got your uh, wooden pegs. And I don't think I wanna cut them off here either because she may change her mind and not want these metal tuners. So that just means I have to do a lot more winding here though. I normally always wind toward the close side of your tuner, but I'm starting on further over here so that I'll have enough room to wind it this direction. I might actually get my uh, drill and, and, and turn these with a drill. I don't know that this will turn it. I don't think it will very easily. Not very easily. I'll have to come up with a way because I don't have the patience for this. Well, some people might think this is a bit extreme, but for my purposes, I figure I got to do four of these and it's going to take me a while on each one of them. So why not just make a specially made winder for these? Kind of get an idea of approximate size. I'd, it doesn't need to be very big, I don't think. Just penciling it in here about what I think it needs to be. Make itself a custom winder for my drill, and then I don't have to deal with it. Well, 
Well, that might do the trick. May have been a waste of time, you never know. Doesn't take very long to do something like that, though, if you got the right stuff. Let me see which way I want to turn it here first, because I'm not even sure. I want it to be t turning clockwise. All right, so I think I've got it that way. No, I've got it on counterclockwise. So let's see if it works. Okay, it's working, but guess what came off the tailpiece and all that? Well, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, that's because this came out. That's in there, it's okay, I think. I like to be real neat when I do these things, so I get a little picky. I try to keep all the strings wound really smooth and tight, sliding it all back over. And then what I need to do is hold on to this. I'll probably just use my right hand to hold on to that, because I think I can turn this with my left hand. That might be enough. Time I get the bridge on. Nope, it's not enough yet. I'm sure of that, but all right. I can go some more. Okay, maybe now it'll hold a bridge. Yep, I think it will. Now we'll go to the next string. So you can see there that it did actually pay off to make that because that was way faster than I could have done it the other way. I probably already saved the time that it took to make that thing. And I got to do three more strings. So we'll do the E next. And we'll start it by hand, of course. This is another thing that hurts my hands is this motion of twisting. So that's another reason why I don't want to do, do this by hand. Even though I think I've got it started here pretty good. I think that's going to be good enough for the start. It needs to be a little tighter than that, but not much. Now I'm just going to check and see where the sound post is. The sound post is a pretty good location, I think. So I don't think we have too much problem there. I'm trying to uh, look down this and make sure that we're utilizing the, the whole fingerboard and keeping things symmetrical. That's close enough for right now. Now we'll go to the, would be the D string. It would be the next one in line. My sweet Melinda. Made a faux pas there, wasn't thinking. I put the D where the A is. And once again, this slot is too, too tight. That one's good enough for now. And now we'll get the A on. The day. Okay, well there we go. We've got the strings on it, at least uh, kind of temporarily on it. I'm looking at the action. The action's already better than it used to be by quite a bit, but I think the action's going to be just about right. So let me think about this all and I'll show you my next move. Got these spaced the way I want them. The way I do that, see these two little marks there? You know, I get them approximately like I think I should get them, and then I put the marks on those make the marks on the two strings and then I check it with these two and then I check it with those two and th then I know it's right, you know. It's pretty easy, it's just done by eye, you don't have to measure anything. Well, I mean, you just make sure that you got room down your fingerboard and everything, that it's all gonna work. Looks like it's pretty good. And now I'm going to put on the old close-up glasses. I've already marked this one, so I'm gonna take this away and then just put a least little bit of a indention here. Doesn't need much. 
just a tiny bit of a notch just to keep it sitting there where it doesn't move. Okay, this next one I'm going to make the notch just about in the same spot that the string's in, but maybe just lean it a hair. Try that one. That looks good. That looks real good. That looks real good. Doesn't need to be much. If, if you can see the notch, it's probably too big. You just barely need to have anything there at all. Now I'm going to look down at this end and see how good I did on the nut. The strings are a little bit high off of this. I'm going to tighten them up a little bit more so I can see it a little better because when they're tighter, they'll, they'll pull down in there a little better. I think they can all go a little deeper, so I'm going to do that. You can have these almost touching the fingerboard, so nice and low is good. Just where they're just barely off the fingerboard. Make some note real easy. Now I kneel by her graveside in the valley, listening to the lonesome crickets call. Can't help. But... I don't know if I got that one too low or not. I'm going to double check it here. Nope, it's still. I think we're still okay. I did get that one pretty low, but it's. I think we're still okay. As long as it's not touching, you're probably good. The other thing when you're tuning up a violin, you have to constantly keep this bridge straight. It always pulls forward as you're tightening the strings. So every couple of seconds you need to stop and just grab a hold of it and pull it back a little bit. I'm gonna let it rest for a little while and then uh, you know that'll let the string stretch and the whole instrument stretch a little bit and then we'll try to play it for you. My friends we're here at Dickie's Barbecue Pit here in Rolla, Missouri. Uh, Gina Hyzinga, otherwise known as Smiley Face Fiddle Girl on the YouTube channel is uh, going to play her fiddle that we uh, restored. What are we gonna play Gina? St. Anne's Reel in the key of D.
uh, Gina, are you getting used to your fiddle now? I am. I am. It's a, it's different. Every fiddle has its own personality yep. and its own handling, and so I'm spending time with it and getting to know her. So yeah. she's she's got a really beautiful tone, nice yeah. deep tone, and it came from Carol. So That's Carol's the one who's nice. been keeping that <laughs> under her bed for how many years? Yeah. Probably 40 or 50. Wow. 40 or 50 cool. years. So it lay around for about 40 or 50 years. Mm -hmm. Now it's in your hands. Yes, and you you help. Got get it set up so it can have some new life in it. So. Well, I'm <laughs> glad you're happy with it. I am. I'm thrilled. Thank you so much, Jerry. It's beautiful. You're welcome. Good work. <laughs>